Hi there, my name is Susan Hamilton, and you're watching Offbeat Business TV or listening to the OBBM Network podcast or OBBM Radio Dallas. Today, I'm talking with Micah Grace of the, with the Silverado Communities. <laughs> You're listening to the Offbeat Business Show, rebuilding American business influence locally, nationally, and abroad, bringing you experienced insight for a strong, influential brand and successful life in business. Here's your host, Susan Hamilton. And I'm excited to share what she's got to say today about memory care, because as you've heard me say so many times before, 80% of American micro to small business tend to be family-owned businesses of nine employees or less. That means we're building our business while we're raising our kids, taking care of our parents. We probably have a veteran or active duty in our family or workspace, and over 30% of us have an addict in our family or workspace. In Dallas County, that could be as high as 50%. I'm talking with Micah Grace today because we've had the most fabulous discussions about memory care and about the stigmas that can be associated with that and about the pressures local family businesses experience when they're trying to juggle it all, and this happens to be the reality for you today. Micah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for letting me be here. I appreciate it. So you were telling me some things about Silverado being being very different and about your very first experience with them. I wonder if you'd be willing to share your story about your first experience, both what you anticipated and what you ended up seeing when you were introduced to Silverado. So at Silverado, um, I had been in the industry for five years previous, six years, um, and and my first introduction into memory care, assisted living, I said, no way. Um, I was recruited, was working with a recruiter, and she asked me if I wanted to interview for a job for assisted living, and I had the same stigma ideas that everyone else did. And, and what would that be? What, what do we tend to think when we think about assisted living? I remember when I was a child, um, my I would go to different nursing homes and it was horrible. There were smells, it was very sterile environment, it was scary, it was clinical, um, there was nothing going on and everyone just sat in wheelchairs. And my grandmother, who started experiencing some issues, um, ended up in a nursing home like this. And I hated to go visit her. Mm -hmm. I hated it for her. Um, So when I was introduced and invited into this world, I said, no way. And the recruiter, as a hidden blessing, um, said, just go see what it's about. So I went to this assisted living and I started watching people, and they were having a good time. (laughs) They were going to happy hour. I I sat while I was waiting for my interview and watched people um, just go about their daily business. It was like college. So when when I started with Silverado, it was to a much higher level. We are in the community, Silverado is all about memory care. For 22 years, we have been doing nothing but secured community memory care. We have at-home PAs um, through Silverado at Home. We have Silverado Hospice. Um, And with Silverado Hospice, that came about from our communities and from our at-home because different companies were coming in and these hospice companies didn't get what we did. So the hourly frontline associates said, we need to do something about this Mm. and do our own hospice. So there is so much more that we offer and so much more that can be expected. It's not that sterile environment. It's not that clinical environment. No, that sounds wonderful. It sounds like what you'd like us to understand is that when you're going through these things in your family, that we can trust you. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that we can trust you to love our people. Yeah. Because I, I, see, I hear that in your heart, and I've heard that from you now several times through these conversations. Mm-hmm. And I think it's interesting, even now, mm-hmm. you just described what your, how your front lines felt. They mm-hmm. took one look at this and said, ooh, we can do it better. Right. 
I think that's the mark of an excellent company. Yes, it is. We have so much education, so much support. We are doing ongoing research for what's best for our residents. And even with that, what's best for our families. They're going through a journey and it's hard. When they have a loved one that they're trying to care for at home, it, it's, it's the balancing. It's, it's, you have to watch this person 24 seven. You see silver alerts constantly right, through. Right. It hurts, <clears throat> it hurts when I drive down the interstate and I see the silver alerts. I'm mm. like, why can't they be at Silverado instead? It's a safe environment. Well, that's a question that I have for you. When we're talking, you, you mentioned that it was a secured environment. What does that mean? So it's a secured environment in that, you know, they can come and go as they please, but they're coming and going with us. <clears throat> if, if I have a resident that, you know, wants to go outside, outside of the community, um, they can. Oh, we're not, wow. <laughs> we're not going to tell them no, because most of the time it's just knowing that they want to get past those doors. Don't you love that? <laughs> I think that's fabulous. It, it is. For instance, I have a very, um, a very highly social resident, and he comes to the, to the front office. He comes to our stand-up meeting every morning. He brings his notebook, or we need to give him a notebook. He's there to work. That's his purpose. And he doesn't always understand. He can't communicate everything. But he just wants to be like everyone else, you know, because he was a very highly um, noted professional. He's Isn't that something? changed the world. And, and he's living in my community. So he just wants to continue to change the world. So we give him a notebook. He's part of our meetings. He wants to know that he can go in and out of that door. A lot of memory care places, you know, you have assisted living, you have your memory care wings, so, or your memory care floor. And, and still in the decline of the journey that the residents are facing, they know that there's something beyond those doors, mm. or they are being told, no, they can't. They don't know the numbers on the elevator. And with us, if you want to go outside, okay, can you wait a moment and let's have coffee? Or just a minute, let me grab my phone and let's go. It's, it's okay. It's normalization. It's his dignity. And, and that's why we're here. Oh, we want wow. to protect his dignity. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous. And it gives me such comfort to know that you are located in several places right here in the DFW area. Yes, ma'am. So... We have five locations, five communities here in the DFW. We have 14 communities throughout Texas, and we are also all over. Um, we have 36 communities throughout the United States. And then in addition to that, we have our at-home offices, our hospice offices, and thousands of heartfelt associates. Isn't that amazing? And I noticed, mm -hmm. I brought these books out here uh, yes. that you brought us because there's, there's so much to understand about the way a company's built. Now, I, I have a lot of respect for that. I mm -hmm. see that I'm building my own company to have those types of considerations. Right. So, so I, I understand how, how much detail goes into building it our way, right. how important it is. And it looks like the founders of this organization had some very clear things that they wanted to accomplish when they decided to start working in this field. And as most things are, it started through personal experience. Yes, yes. So Lauren Shook um, grew up, his family owned a, or ran a psychiatric hospital. And that's this one right here? This is Lauren. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so he came up with this idea, you know, went through his life, went through college, um, came up with this idea. He wanted to know if his mom had this horrible disease of Alzheimer's, what would he want for her? Yeah. It's not for her to sit in a room. Absolutely not. It's not for her to sit in a wheelchair in a hallway. Um, and, and Steve Winter, um, and, and both still very involved in what we do on our day to day. I can, as an administrator, I can still pick up the phone and call Lauren and oh, wow. we can have that conversation. Excellent. Um, and same with Steve. Um, there was a third owner 
our founder and um, he passed away, but you know we still recognize him at our leadership retreats. Um, but Lauren wanted to know, where am I going to put my mother? What would I want for her? A lot of places that our families visit walk into you know the memory care piece of it and find people playing with baby dolls mm. um, or stuffed animals. And we don't believe in that. It, it is a comforting thing. It is a nurturing thing, and they do well with that. But at the same token, if you take the dementia away, is your mom going to be playing with a baby doll? Is she going to be changing the diaper of a baby doll or holding and rocking a baby doll? No, she's not going to be playing with a stuffed animal. It's dignity. It's respect for her. She's going to be playing with real babies. She's going to love when the kids come over. And that's a beautiful thing. At Silverado, we have, we are encouraged to bring our kids to the community to interact. Um, my kids have grown up in my community. I thought that was fabulous. <laughs> I thought that was fabulous. And I, and I really just love what I'm hearing from you, Micah. Um, it gives me great confidence in the Silverado brand when I see it to say, oh, wow, this organization handles things differently. This organization really cares. Friends, are you enjoying this conversation with Micah Grace as much as I am? We are going to hear from a few of our sponsors and we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk a little bit more about dementia, Alzheimer's, and some of the things we may not be considering. 22 veterans every day take their own lives. They commit suicide. A couple years ago, I talked four people off the cliff with guns in their hands because they're looking for hope, they're looking for trust, they're looking for respect, they're looking for somebody that cares. Blue Dragon International Consultants, we care. Go to bdic.net to find a conference near you. The American business economy is positioned as it has never been before. Professional videography is a core element for attracting a higher level of engagement with the people group you need for significant impact. Now is your time to shine. My name is Bill Brock, owner of White Rock Films, and I invite you to a powerful opportunity in the marketplace, an opportunity to draw excited people to your events, an opportunity to showcase your ideas on infrastructure, an opportunity to become known as the industry authority and enjoy the associated benefits of a strong, influential brand. Video highlights, video teaches, video puts a resistant market at ease, and video stirs the hearts and imaginations of your allies and strategic client base. White Rock Films offers full audio, video production for businesses ready to embrace the future, handling your project with professionalism, experience, and polish unheard of in the industry. My name is Bill Brock, and White Rock Films wants your business. See us online at whiterockfilms.com. Experience the zeal difference. It's my favorite beverage. I never thought nutrition could taste so good. I know it's why I feel the best I've ever felt. Wouldn't start my day without this beverage. Every once in a while, a product comes along that's so innovative, it has the ability to shake up how we feel about nutrition. You're about to be introduced to a one-of-a-kind nutritional powerhouse. It's scientifically formulated and backed by a landmark clinical trial. This wellness product has created a movement that has already generated over 300 million in sales. It continues to change lives, create a thirst in people to be healthier, and is inspiring generations in ways other beverages simply do not. It's called Zeal, and thousands of people worldwide, just like you, appreciate that it takes the guesswork out of nutrition and why it's loved by so many. If you don't experience the Zeal difference in 30 days, we'll refund your money. Join us in this movement and experience the Zeal difference. And we're back. You're watching Offbeat Business TV or listening to OBBM Network Podcast or OBBM Radio Dallas. 
My name is Susan Hamilton, and I'm talking with Micah Grace today. And she is an administrator, a senior administrator, with the Silverado communities that are doing some amazing things with memory care. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's so important for our market because we are specifically focused on the local family business. The local family business, friends, that's 80% of American micro to small business. We tend to be family-owned businesses of nine employees or less. That means when we've got issues surrounding our kids or our parents, which, yeah, we do while we're building our business, right? All of these things are happening at the same time. We need to know who we can trust, and we need to be willing to think differently. Uh, a lot of the things that, and, and stigmas in our communities are really because we've seen people repetitively do things because they've always done them that way. We right. love to take an ax to those thoughts and ideas right. and bring in the things that worked because you know what? There's things that work, like Silverado. Yes. Oh, we're so excited about you. Yes, thank you, thank you. So one of the stigmatisms with the family-owned business, um, you are pulled in so many different directions, mm -hmm. and I know I've been there. Um, I have been a consultant most of my life before this industry. Um, and it's so hard to juggle everything, just like you're saying. Yes. You have kids, you have responsibilities. When you're owning your own business, it's 24 seven. So, and what's hard is when you do have a loved one that you're trying to care for, and I know there are many people, you can't leave that person to do that. So it's, it's a juggle, but yet, from the stigmatism, you want to hide that. So is it, um, you said you've got home care. So it, it's possible to have Silverado in my home to help me manage things in my location? Yes, yes. So when you have anybody in, that needs care from that activities of daily living piece, um, you can have Silverado come into your home and you have a personal care attendant, they will do errands, they will help, you know, do whatever needs to be done. Assisting with dressing, grooming, bathing, dining, um, run small errands. Mm, that sounds like a tremendous amount of help. Yes, and the nice thing about that is they can also take your loved one and bring them to a community that's local and, and still get all of the engagements and, and benefit from that as well and then bring them home at the end of the day. And it gives you, if you work from home, you know you can appreciate mm -hmm. that, that little time away. And there, your loved one is, is benefiting from that socialization. You know, we found that the two different times of life uh, that a local family business does work from home is usually during the, the early stages when they, mm -hmm. most of these larger companies that, that are actually quite successful out there today mm -hmm. started in a home mm -hmm. office, started in the garage, right? They right. started right there. Uh, but then there is that other side when it's time to bring it back home because now we're caring for the people in our family and it's really not convenient to have a location outside of the home when you can do it right there. And, and let's face it, today we can. Right. Today we can do that. Um, tell me a little bit about how we might see or recognize the difference between Alzheimer's or dementia. Is that something that you can speak to for us? Yes. Um, Alzheimer's is a disease. Dementia is a diagnosis wrapped around a set of symptoms. Okay, so, interesting, interesting. Yes. Do they behave differently? Depending on the type of dementia and from what it's stemming, yes. How would I know if those things are happening in my own family because I'm busy? I may not even recognize when I'm st when those early onset stages, and, and there, it might be wise if I recognized early on. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> early on, um, you just start seeing little things that you really have to pay attention to. And like with Alzheimer's, it always starts with that short-term memory loss. Okay. And, and we all have that, right. you know, I get it when I'm stressed or I have too much on my plate right. and my kids remind me, oh, hey, this is what happened. I'm like, wait, no, I don't remember promising that. <laughs> um, you know they're working <laughs> you though, right? When they, <laughs> right. When they do that. So there are a lot of things that can um, cause, you know, that short-term memory loss. But then when it goes to the phase of judgment and choice and mm. you start seeing things that 
are probably outside of what you would expect from your mother, your father, what you have recognized in the past. That's not a normal behavior. And a lot of times we set it aside because, oh, well, you know, they're just getting old or, oh, you know, it's just a change in whatever situation. And we always make excuses. So definitely going to a clinician, you know, going to that, that primary care, starting there. Is that really where you go? You start with primary care and you say, I mean, what do you do? What's the process? You bring your loved one with you and you say, hey, let's go in for a checkup. Are you open about what it is you're trying to discover? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, how do you dance around that? I would think that's terribly awkward. Yeah. It is awkward, and the first thing is coming to realization within and recognizing and being honest with yourself that there might be a problem. And if you're wrong, fantastic. Oh, yes, yes. Um, if it's truly an issue, I suggest calling that primary care first and having um, a conversation outside of your loved one and then also encouraging your loved one to do the same because you don't want to be biased, but you do have concerns and you don't want to create more anxiety mm. in front of your loved one. It, it's hard for us as grown adults, you know, as grown children yeah. to say, you know, hey, I think my, my loved one might be going through this. It's going to be just as hard or more for them to recognize and hear that they have this diagnosis. Is there anything in particular that I might be able to recognize if this was happening in my family? The difference between dementia or Alzheimer's, something that might be uh, a red flag. Now, it sounds to me like most people have no idea when it gets started. Uh, but just is there, is, is there anything in particular I might notice that would make me go, yeah, I was a... Yeah, um, asking yourself the question, Okay, if I'm looking at my dad right now, my dad is incredibly amazing. Um, he's a mayor in my home state. Um, but looking at, okay, would I allow my dad right now to manage my checkbook? Probably not. So that's when I want to start really considering. Um, and even a funny story. I was meeting with a gentleman who had all kinds of questions about his mother. She moved in with him and he was providing, you know, formal care for her. Thought she was fine. And then it just started progressing. He started seeing little things, um, you know, the pot being left on the stove and she would go off and forget it. Okay, we forget things and may remember and go back and check the pot but it gets to a point that it's a safety issue. Mm. The pot's on fire. Um, there are metal things going into the microwave. And when he came to meet with me, and he, you know, he knew that he couldn't afford to be in a community. Um, he couldn't afford assisted living, but I invited him to come. Let me just teach you, let me help you, let me give you things to look for, watch for, and, and provide resources. Mm -hmm. So when he came, he was very reluctant to tell me everything, again, because of that stigma. But I started filling in the blanks for him. And, and I said, you know, when your mom, you know, how do you deal with it at this point? Right, because right. he was arguing with her and trying to correct her, and that wasn't working. She was adamant. And I used the example, I said, when she puts that laundry detergent in the refrigerator, that's exactly where it belongs. In her mind, with where she is, that's exactly where it belongs. Leave it there. I just think that's beautiful. Micah, thank you so much for spending time with us today and helping us just talk about these sensitive things, talk about those things that are a little uncomfortable. Uh, and friends, I hope that uh, you pulled something out of this that is helpful or that might help you talk with someone else that you know who could be going through something like this. It's important to know who our resources are and who we can trust. These are 
These are our family. These are this is our community. These are people that we love. And as many of you know, we are supporting the Blue Dragon International uh, Conference uh, coming up. And and those the the mental health associated with trauma can be a big deal. Yes. Uh, so all of these things are, are are very very important for us to be talking about. Yes. Micah, how can they get a hold of you if they're here in the DFW area or even nationally? How can someone find mm -hmm. Silverado? In the DFW area, um, you can call our community at 972-447-0038. No matter where you live, um, whatever resources, we will put you in touch with the right person. Um, and then also go to silverado.com. We have a chat line and we can answer whatever questions oh, those are, that's anyone wonderful. might have. Thank you, thank you. And now friends, if you're driving down the road and you didn't have a chance to write that down, know that uh, we'll have all this information accompanying the podcast at offbeatbusiness.com. Mm -hmm. uh, know that you can find all of our information, all of the podcasts on the OBBM network. Uh, look at, go through iTunes, go through Google Play Music, but most of all, we encourage you to download the Offbeat Business app where you can get all that information in the palm of your hands. Until next time, you've been watching Offbeat Business TV listening to OBBM Radio Dallas, or listening to the OBBM Network podcast. This is Susan Hamilton. Until next time. You've been listening to the Offbeat Business Show. Find our lineup, podcast, magazine, event calendar, and sponsor information, even our membership directory, all available on the Offbeat Business app or at offbeatbusiness.com. Download the Offbeat Business app today. Take this for me, buddy.